Hello, hello. <laughs> How's everyone? Thank you for howdy, joining. Howdy. Thank you for joining. So here we got another episode. Today we have pizza data visualizations. And we yes. have Dr. Joe, friend Dr. Joe. Thank you for being here, Dr. Joe. Um, we have Chris Tover right. and Michael Perello. This is going to be incredible. I mean, you guys <laughs> done this before. I mean, can't wait yep. to see this. Uh, we're going to have data visualization related like to pizza stuff, you know, super cool stuff. This is the first time to be here. So, you know, that everybody who went here have a data visualization that none of us have seen before. And the idea for us is just to, you know, talk about it. Uh, you know, what do we think about this data visualization? How can we make them better? What we don't understand? Uh, you know, just learning about data visualization in general and having fun. And if you're in the chat, you can also, you know, answer these questions. Um uh, be with us here. Uh, so I'm going to start asking. So Dr. Joe, what is, what is your favorite pizza? What, what do you usually order when you call a pizza place? Or oh my goodness. So uh, we typically get for myself, my wife and our younger son who's still living at home. Mm -hmm. We get uh, hamburger on oh. all of it, uh, chicken on his side and <laughs> mushroom mushrooms on everyone's side. Oh, wow. So That's hamburger, awesome. chicken, hamburger, chicken and mushroom. Hamburger, chicken, and mushroom. I heard that mushroom is the number one uh, ingredient, apparently. It's one of the yep. number one ingredients. As um, long as you don't pull them up out of the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you, Chris? What do you order at home for your kids? Oh, man. I wish I could order it at home. I love a taco pizza. I love the confusion oh. of taco, but and you never see it anymore. And it used to be like, I think Tombstone used to do it, the frozen mm -hmm. one. And I haven't seen that like in, in wow. decades. So... If any of you know of a place to get a taco pizza, uh, you know, I'm there. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. That's like super interesting. I never, I never thought that uh, that would be a thing. I mean, that's awesome. What it. about you, Michael? Michael over there in Phoenix, what are they? What, what is your favorite? Yeah, I've got two go to's traditional pepperoni and mm -hmm. Hawaiian. So, Hawaiian. I know that wow. probably doesn't resonate with a lot of people, but you know what? <laughs> It's I good. like I like pineapple too. I like pineapple too. Uh, pineapple and ham, or pineapple and prosciutto, or something like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with something that we started last week. That is, uh, we're gonna show and and uh, Torjo, I think you will be like, whoa! It's like we <laughs> like to show three quick data visualization bloopers. These are. <laughs> insane data visualizations that people are like are you kidding me you're serious that somebody you know is, is doing that and and show uh something that makes no sense at all and let me see you guys can see my screen <laughs> so be, you're gonna love this because this is from florida and we're from florida tell me what do you think about this craziness <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Ay, ay, ay. What in the cat hair is that? Yeah. It's, not, it looks it's like bad a... enough at first glance, and then it looks even worse the deep the more you look at it. Yeah, I, I think that's why we don't have too many cases in Florida here. <laughs> right. The, the the scale makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Exactly. It's like an upside down it's an upside down scale and mm -hmm. um what do the colors mean? Uh and in no. and that four thousand is like uh the smallest uh, one right and that yeah. that's crazy uh even is the uh, this is a, a beast blooper so we're, we're bringing this beast bloopers oh you know uh and, and and this is this is what politicians <laughs> always win um and chris this is what politicians always win <laughs> <laughs> we got oh, the 14 yeah. this this guy won because you know oh, he's apparently higher than the 14. <laughs> and and oh, I see Leand Leandro. This is from Brazil. You're there in the chat. I see you. I mean, that's what. But that's they. So they sent me this from Brazil. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is another beast blooper, real quick. And and then this one. It's more interesting. This is for Chris. So Chris, look, the 56 <laughs> apparently is this now. Yeah. What? <laughs> oh my god. What? Oh my god. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. This bloopers here, uh, Michael. What do you think about this this one in um, the fifty? The, the apparently the the three point six is the white the white area here. Yeah, I mean. this just proves why we still have jobs. 
Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know. You know, you spend so much time trying to look at this and analyze and try to figure out. You know, what are we missing? But yeah. I just don't. My my favorite it. this week is definitely this one from Florida. Yeah. That's what we don't. That's what we don't wear masks in Florida. That's what we don't we do. Whatever we want here. Free, free, yeah. free country here, Doctor Joe in, in Florida. Do whatever we want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is incredible. I guess they um, want to show that uh, the lower number is better, and <laughs> you have more safety with fewer cases, and that's why the bar is bigger. <laughs> I, don't I think know. you just put more thought <laughs> into it than they did. <laughs> yeah, right. Apparently oh. so. Oh, good heavens. That's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, so let me see. So, so Chris, show us what you got. Show yeah. us what you got. Let, Chris is going to oh, yeah, start. Okay. Chris okay, always got three incredible well, stuff. Gonna, first, me, yeah, first I'll start because um, because I have done a lot of work. And I still do a lot of work for uh, Papa John's, which happens to sell pizza. Okay. So I was so excited to uh, to join this chat today. Um, and if you guys can see that, uh, this is, m first of all, to start off with one of my bad ones, and I'll move on to, it, to another one. I actually made this. I will, I'm, I'm not proud to admit, years and years ago. Okay. And, you know, so full disclosure, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking more than what those bloopers were that you just showed, but I, I thought at the time this was a good idea. Like, oh, why not do like not a bar chart, not a pie chart? Let me do like a little people chart. And these mm -hmm. are the people buying the pizza. And um, I am so sorry I I did this. <laughs> I've learned a lot since then. This was a uh, I was just a kid then. Um, but but no, what, well, yeah. So one to, one to show you guys. Um, so of course they had a. Sh I don't know if we're all gonna be showing pie charts with the, the mm -hmm. pizza theme today. But I came across this one. Mm -hmm. um, and there's many opinions I oh, have sure. on it, but yeah, I'd love to love to hear what you guys uh, what you guys have to say. It's good. What do you what do you think, Mike? Mike, what do you think? Well, one, I think the you know the math isn't really necessarily adding up, but <laughs> I'm I'm still I'm trying to. You know, figure out for each slice. You know, what's the what's the most popular combination here? Um, you know, that immediately I went to the ham and pineapple. That that's my my thing. That's fine. <laughs> Hawaiian. Um, you know, but if we're looking at you know total percentage of, is that just coverage? I guess. Uh, you know, again, we're we're exceeding a hundred percent there, but I don't know. Mm. I mean, this is from, I've seen this before. Um, yeah. This, this is what they did this on Makeover Monday, I think, because of the, okay. how was it? Um, I knew about the mushroom. Um, it's just like <clears throat> the calculation is just done incorrectly. It's just like, what is mushroom out of the total? What is tomato out of, do you know what I mean? It's just not. Mm -hmm. Right done correctly i mean it's just not mm, not run right let me see what they have in the chat what do you think dr joe about this craziness this well yeah it is crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for one thing uh, the, the six i don't think that they were trying to achieve anything in so far as proportional slice sliceless slice but anyway, sizes of the slices um mm -hmm. because they're all the same size for one thing mm -hmm. exactly. uh for another thing when you add it up you add up the numbers and you get like uh, 472 percent. How can you have 472 percent of a single pizza? Right. Um, and then what is it that you're comparing as uh, as our esteemed colleagues were saying, you know, it's 65 percent of what? 65 percent of total coverage, 65 percent of the total order, um, you know, uh, as uh, and and the other thing is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a select as many as you like. So yes, of course, when you ever have, when you have people that are able to make multiple choices in their evaluation, then yeah, by definition, the numbers will always add up to greater than a hundred. Mm -hmm. So if I were doing this and I still wanted to have the pizza, I would have done this at, oh, I'm skipping ahead to your other question. Yeah, I think it's somewhere. No, 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 you're good. You're good. Go uh, ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, go I'm ahead. sorry. Uh, I, I was just going to say, um, go ahead, this no, should go ahead. be 
a bar chart. OK, <laughs> you could still do pizzas. The bars, I mean, you know, if you want to shape them like wedges, like pizza wedges, you mm -hmm. know, to keep the the um, uh, keep the motif of the pizza going here. And yeah, for the pepperoni, make the wedge look like a pepperoni for the ham and pineapple, make them look like ham and pineapple, but flip it. Have a, no, wait a minute. Hold it. Um, horizontal. Par, yeah. Horizontal bar chart and have each bar be the different um, uh, uh, the, the different toppings in descending order with mushrooms up at the top, then ham, then peppers, then pepperoni, then uh, tomato, then bacon, sweet corn, spinach. Bleh. I mean, olives and then spinach. Bleh. Excuse me. That's my um, bias here. And then, you know, they, they would still be, or if you want to make them like breadsticks, right? Yeah. Pizza topped mm -hmm. breadsticks, at least breadsticks have the same shape uh, exactly. as, um, um, as uh, you know, as a bar chart. And mm -hmm. so, you know, each breadstick, it would be a pepperoni looking breadstick, a pepper looking <laughs> breadstick, and so on and so forth. If I were doing it, that's how I do it. And then flip it on its side. And you would still have the really cool effect of making it look sort of kind of like a pizza, only pizza topped breadsticks correct and maybe a little <laughs> faded watermark pizza graphic in the background you know yeah like yeah that. yeah it will work so what do you think chris what do you what, what, what do you wanted to say yeah. now? now that's that's cool like that that sparks more ideas because i'm with you guys on on this i i think as i look at this more i bet this is probably like you know a stock photo of the pizza mm -hmm. cut like this and then somebody, yeah, for whatever reason, instead of making a bar chart, said, oh, you know what? We'll label this stock photo. And mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work. And then this is another example. The deeper you go, the more confusing it gets. Like in the footnote, <laughs> it says, other items not depicted include onion, 62%. Well, gee, 62% would be like the second biggest topping choice, but mm -hmm. they didn't show it because I guess the stock photo didn't have any onions on it. So it's like what it's what are you trying yeah. to do here um mm -hmm. but i like that idea like I, like i would do it too if, if i had the time and and to to capture this idea like okay can we make this a visually interesting um graphic you know you could have like a, a like a pizza crust at the bottom and then have like okay 65 percent these are the mushrooms mm -hmm. are, are going on it. And then like 60% are the peppers, 56% are, are the pepperonis and make mm. each bar chart, like the actual, you know, the, the topping. And it kind of then shows you the idea, like what are people putting on top of the pizza? Cause it does get to the idea that some of these will be layered too. So you might have an actually a mushroom and pepperoni and spinach. Um, only the insane people do the ham and pineapple. Sorry, Michael. Um, but because I, I studied that too, it actually gets kind of complicated the toppings on pizza, like the different combinations, and then yes. if they do it on the left hand side versus on mm -hmm. the right hand side, and then if they mix up the crust, it's it's it actually um, that's one of the hardest things I've done in the past few years is looking at topping analysis of pizzas. So, wow. um, yeah, so it can get it can get tricky, um, but this is not the way. Not the way to do it. And I think a, a lesson for anyone, if you do mm -hmm. see, hey, that's a great photo, I'm just going to stick some data labels on it. Exactly. Um, please don't. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you know, back in uh, high school, I used to work for pizza establishment, making pizzas. And, you know, we get to make our own. And, you know, this is a perfect example. You know, at the end of the night, we'd go in and stock up <laughs> pretty much every topping you could, you mm -hmm. know, and, <laughs> You'd have like fifteen hundred percent of toppings in in your pizza, and we know now from experience that that is not a good combination. It doesn't taste good. The ratio is bad, and and so I think depending on you know what we're trying to get out of this story, you know whether it's optimal flavor, taste, profit, you know I, I love the ideas from you know Dr. Joe and Chris. Hey, you know here's the proper amount of ratio based on the toppings that you select. You know, if you're going right. to do ham and pineapple, this is the optimal ratio for profitability, for flavor, for mm -hmm. taste. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, a pie, right? Use a bar chart, use something that makes yeah. sense. Um, mm -hmm. It's got to be intuitive just by looking at it. The, the last thing that I wanted to say, Chris, is the, the thing that got me crazy is so if you guys look where it says bacon, right? Bacon, sweet corn, mm -hmm. and peppers. Look how mm -hmm. all of them are in the same 
triangle, <laughs> like in the same slide, yeah. <laughs> yeah. three <laughs> on the same. So I'm like, what yeah. is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's confusing. I mean, it's like <clears throat> multiple annotations to the same slice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, incredible. exactly. <laughs> Incredible. So you have another. You have You say you have another one. I think, right? Well, actually, yeah. Let me. I'll, I'll follow up with the like guys were saying in the bar chart. Um, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. did find this example too. Like, okay, if you want to use a pizza, ah, yeah, just have a nice. half side. But then the bar chart that shows the mushrooms. And this is an interesting one of, of men versus women. But I'll I'll um I'll leave it at that. But yeah, this is this was a. Um, I like it. A yeah. better approach. Yes. Yeah. This is what Dr. Joe, what you were saying. Think about these are the breast sticks. Mm -hmm that you were talking about, right? This yeah, is a kind of skinny. Here. The breadsticks are kind of skinny, but that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> what I like is, so on the left is the women, and the right is the men, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. No. Look yeah. at the color. Yeah. If you go by the yeah. color, yeah. women, it and doesn't left say right. left and right, but it, the color of the font, the women is the darker colored font, and the men is the lighter color font mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay yeah. so it makes yeah. you assume that that's what they mean plus i yeah. know my wife that um <laughs> <you know. laughs> and i know we both equally like mushrooms um mm -hmm. i well neither of us like spinach uh but she likes bacon more than i do and yeah this kind of follows along with our personal preferences mm -hmm. so yeah this is cool because you see here, Chris, they use the pizza on the right just to grab the mm -hmm. attention, but it's not yeah. in a chart. And then the the, yeah. the data is here in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was, that was better. That might, I would just suggest in this one, though, I love the question, does pineapple belong on a pizza? That also brings your attention, like the, the image, but then that's not answered quickly in the visual. Then you have to really dig in and see yeah you know right because it, it's not it's not it's kind of like a bait and switch like we're not going to actually answer this question we're just posing a question um the answer is obviously no sorry michael um <laughs> you have to look to see it, it, you know do people like it or not and it's kind of buried down here mm -hmm. what do you think michael about this one i think think this chart uh does a really good job of you know at, at least covering what it says it does. Uh, I, I don't know at, at the title, you know, does pineapple belong on a pizza? Uh, you know, it, it's subjective. It, it doesn't really indicate one way or another. But what I think it does do um, well is support kind of the ancillary uh, annotations. You know, 50% of the bridge survey don't prefer pineapple and so on and so forth. Um, and I do like how they kind of split it up between uh, men and women also. Mm -hmm, yeah. So. Um, you know, the only things that I, I might change is mm -hmm. some of the sizing and coloring, uh, the, the font style. For me, it, it's still a little difficult to read the variation between the men and the women on the colors, mm -hmm. at least for me, is a little subtle. So it, it is difficult to discern. But uh, otherwise, I, I think the information being presented uh, is pretty clear. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. That's great. Any, anything you want to say, Dr. Joe, about the um, the sure. sure. Um, so, yeah, I agree with Chris and you know all of you guys. Um, there, it does a better job than the first one. You still have the motif of the pizza, but at the very beginning, you notice Chris or, or no, not Chris. Um, you, Yamil, you thought, oh yeah, it shows men on the left and women mm -hmm. on the right, mm -hmm. which further um, emphasizes what was said about the colors not being you know uh being too subtle of a difference right mm -hmm. um and you know the the provocative question about the pineapple yeah it does stimulate questions and it does stimulate discussion and it does uh want uh lead people to dig deeper and that's what a graphic any visualization should do the purpose of a good visualization yeah needs to answer a question but it also needs to get us to the point where we dig deeper and stimulate discussion for getting more information right. um but you know if i were going to do this i'd put a different question like um um is it a is it a gender gap or a gender snap you know uh, <laughs> yeah, right instead yeah. of asking does pineapple belong on a pizza mm -hmm. you know 
Yeah. So I, I just love the way they, they did this. But yeah, uh, uh, bring out a little more, you know, more of a distinction in the color changes, um, a different type face, maybe a sans serif. Serif fonts don't do well white on black and on a small uh, small size. You can see sans serif fonts like an Arial or, or something uh, mm -hmm. much better in a smaller size than you can um, mm -hmm. serif font like whatever that is, I guess Times New Roman or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So I would change the, the type of the font. I would bump up the size of the font, even if you have to reposition some things to make <coughs> the bars slightly wider to accommodate a slightly bigger um, you know, uh, uh, font for identifying what um, what each of the uh, of the toppings are, and I like the way that they're doing it in descending order oh, okay. of mm -hmm. uh, of popularity, where the one whatever it is anchovies, and I can't see what's under the anchovies. Yeah, something uh, else. <laughs> oh, something. Like is that what that says? Yeah. Thank you. Miscellaneous, like miscellaneous okay. column. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that you can <laughs> tell. Yeah, you can tell at a glance. Uh, the gender mm -hmm. breakdown by where in, you know, uh, uh, how far the bar is over left or right. And you can mm -hmm. tell at a glance by the width, what's more popular, what's less popular. And the whole thing visually, you notice, sort of kind of looks like a deformed pizza slice. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah somebody. Uh, so in the chat, so this, somebody said, I mean, this is Aaron said, this is difficult for me to compare male to female on each toppings. Your eyes have to go back and forth along the bar to compare each. Mm -hmm. So pretty much what we were uh, just talking yep. about. And, you know, it's uh, very interesting. He also said that this is difficult for me to compare male to... Oh, sorry. It's the same thing oh, here. He said 40% um, agree. That is still a significant number. Also, you cannot really see that with the layout or color use. So the same thing that we were just talking about, right? Um, a better color choice probably will be easier to, to understand. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if Aaron was kind of talking about this, but if, if you're really kind of focusing on does pineapple belong on pizza, I would have mm -hmm. liked pineapple to be emphasized at least in the bar chart, maybe a, a yeah. different color, and then there have some go. more information supporting for each topping Mm -hmm. Just like it does at the very top, right? 58% Brits, you know, don't mm -hmm. prefer pineapple. Well, then talk to me about the other toppings, you know, how that compares to pineapple. Otherwise, again, it, mm -hmm. you know, compared to anchovies and pork and jalapenos, those apparently don't belong on mm -hmm. pizza, uh, whereas pineapple scales higher on the, the list. So, correct, yeah. correct. Michael had to get a uh, um Michael I'm had trying to, get a to there for yeah, yeah. yeah. for this whole thing. That's right. <laughs> that's true. My, um so Chris, do you have any other or that was the No, that's it. Yeah. That's it? That's yeah. awesome. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. so I think if yeah, you yeah. want to add Joe, what what to show us, I think you know you have some crazy uh visualization mm -hmm. you wanted to show us or something that makes a people their eyes explode or something <laughs> oh yes sir <laughs> yes sir i do um if you have it up or do you want me to share um, uh aaron can you pull one up the civic aaron can pull it for you for us the uh multi-faceted pie within a pie yeah. within a pie <laughs> <laughs> concentric <laughs> pies yeah, that's the name of my new company, Concentric Pies Incorporated, <laughs> where pre where pizza comes to life. Yeah, let's see if I'm, Aaron can show us uh, one. If not, let me see if I can uh, pull it up. Um, you have it, Aaron, or you want us to show something else? Will you get it? Mm. Or if not... <clears throat> Michael, can you, can you show us what you got and then, um, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. go ahead and okay. do that. Show us a quick and we go back to, all right, let me know when it's coming through. Oh, uh, yeah, got it. Here is, here is, okay, okay. got it. Very yeah, cool. so my chart, uh, is representing the data that's found on the one byte app so one byte is a kind of a almost like a daily uh 
piece review uh, by Dave Portnoy. Uh, there's also customer, just regular people reviews that go out and do their own thing, and they can submit uh, reviews of you know any pizza chain across the U.S. and all that. Uh, so what we're looking at, at, at least on this dashboard, and we'll cover uh, a few of them um, if we have some time. Uh, this one is really just an overview of all the data since 2013. And when I say all the data, it's you know not necessarily up to date, but it, it's pretty recent as of I think last week. Okay. So across uh, that whole application, um, nearly. 36,000 uh, restaurants have been reviewed. Uh, we can see almost 38,000 users um, by Dave himself. He's visited at least uh, almost 900 of them. And his average score, uh, based on a scale of 0 to 10, um, across all of these has been 7-2. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you kind of assess so this. This is just that main dashboard that kind of gives yeah. you a rundown. Um, and like I said, we'll go through maybe a, a couple more after this. So, so let me give you this straight so everybody knows in the chat. And I've seen this before. This is a, so guys. This is a guy that goes everywhere, and he kind of like go to every single pizza place you can imagine. He's pretty famous online. He's a wow. YouTuber, owner of uh, I think what company is his owner? Is it, is it uh, uh, Barstool Sports? Barstools, yes, the company Barstool, the uh, the, the game gaming uh, sports gaming. Uh, company he's kind of like this i think he's the ceo and he's obsessed <laughs> with pizza and he goes everywhere and he does this you know like um reviews and people do reviews too on the app and he, this app is just for that just for pizza reviews everywhere in the u.s so that's that's what it is and that's his face right there in the middle of the of the two numbers in the middle um so what do, what do you think chris about this in general well, um, yeah, for me, you know, it's, it's helpful to hear some of the background, but then my main question would be like, what am I supposed to do with this? Mm -hmm. um, and okay. I'm not sure. It's, it's like great in terms of, I guess, some background on, on the credibility of, of what he's doing. But if I'm trying to figure out where should I go for pizza tonight, this mm -hmm. doesn't help me. Um, and that's ultimately like, what does the audience want? Like, what's going to help them? Um, and so that's that's like my first thing. I I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. Um, but then the second thing, it's 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 a couple of of my pet peeves. The the top is just um, factoids. You don't know like is that good or bad? Is that getting better, getting worse? Um, again, what am what am I what action am I supposed to take by knowing that there are 36,000 mm -hmm. users or venues or users? Um, and then the, my second pet peeve on this is the dual access. I try to avoid that at all costs because, mm -hmm. um, and in this case in particular, I think is is uh, is not an effective use of it. Um, if you have mm -hmm. to use it, it, it better be a very good reason to use it. And in this case, I don't think it is because it's just it's simply just showing like there's, I don't think there's any correlation. It's just that there's ratings and there's volume of reviews, and I don't know why they are they don't seem to be linked in any way. So there doesn't seem to be a reason to to put them on the same chart. That's that's mm -hmm. my two cents. <laughs> or three cents or four cents. Or <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think, Joe, about this uh, particular? Um, so or... in a way, I'm um, I go with Chris in in that, uh, you know, with the with the factoids, there's there's not a OK. And let me let me um, what's the word uh, caveat, a big caveat. I'm going only by the image that I see and not having any idea what kind of interactivity that there mm -hmm. might be within the chart. And here's why I say that. Mm -hmm. um, the 35,687 venues is meaningless unless somehow there's some sort of interactivity in the, in the grid, in the grid, in the graph where you could say filter on some of the venues. The question about, okay, uh, yeah, this is cool. It leads a lot of um, credence and uh, street cred and credibility to uh, the research that he does and how incredibly uh, thorough he is. And uh, useful to know that um, in the month of July, uh, pizza tends to be 
less highly rated than in the month of October, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, I mean, if that's what, yeah, looking at right score. So the line graph represents the score and the bar graph represents how many people so that you can mm -hmm. see uh, at a glance, people tend to get more pizza in July than they do in October or January, mm -hmm. but the pizza itself tends to be more highly rated in mm -hmm. October than it is in July. Mm -hmm. I got all that in about three seconds just by looking at it. That makes it a good chart if that's what I'm trying to do, right? But again, on the negative side, if what I'm trying to do is figure out what you know, well, do I go to Papa John's or do I go to Pizza Hut? Well, gee, this doesn't tell me unless there's some kind of a filter somewhere like where you click on a bar, say, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, these are weekly, I guess. I don't know. Uh, the one like right, o right over the two in uh, right on the zero two over July 2021. Let's say that's the third week of July. I click on that. And will that show me, uh, you know, the 300, uh, the 1700 people? Uh, the 1700 reviews and if so will i be able to say filter on how did the papa john's how were the papa john's rated versus how were the pizza huts rated versus how were the dominoes rated in which case that might give me a better picture to know okay well then pizza hut seems to be better seems to be doing better in july than they are in april uh, Domino's seems to be doing better in October than they are in January. You know, that kind of thing, which would be revealed to me um, by the fact that, um, you know, that that it's drillable. Uh, I like the way you can zoom out and look at like a whole year, 2018, 2020, 20, I guess that's what that means. And mm -hmm. when you click, you're zooming in on a one, two, three, four, five, six month I guess, a six month span of time mm. within, you know, the overall thing. So I like what it's doing, mm. but I don't have enough information to say overall, you know, is it awesomely cool? Yeah, it does look cool. But unless there is some of that interactivity that I mentioned, you know, there are there are some things lacking. So I don't want to go hating, uh, you know, I don't want to go hating on it or anything. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I see that. Do you think that Michael, what 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 is missing is the no, the the most number one thing, just a title? What is that we're trying to right? Yeah, to, to... no, I I think the emphasis on on this dashboard mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. was more just hey, here's what's in the app. Okay, it's almost like a marketing thing, mm -hmm. and and I agree with all the comments from uh, you know Dr. Joe and Chris. You know, yeah, I, I want more interactivity, and you kind of. You don't actually get the interactivity. You can actually go to the different dashboards oh. and you can get to that granularity. Mm -hmm. And we'll jump into one of them in a moment. But at the surface, it's just like, hey, uh, you know, if you were going to a corporate website, we've got, you know, 50,000 uh, employees and, you know, these are, you know, the contributions that we've made. You know, it's just to make you feel good or, if you're a marketing department within the organization, it's like, look, you know, we're we're trending up. It it's good, but for analysis, uh, I agree. These just pose more questions than what mm -hmm. you're able to get answers out of, and you you'd probably want to click through and do that. I just don't think that that was the intent here. I think it was more just, right. hey, here's what we got. Yeah. Um, but I will go kind of into. Uh, you know, we've got a, a section for the reviews, and I know we we uh, had m made some comments about the uh, restaurants themselves there you go. and the reviews. So you can get to it. The unfortunate part was it didn't tie well with the interactivity. So you kind of have to bounce around and through some of these things, do some filtering. That's one of the things I didn't uh, necessarily like, but um, we can stick on this one, for example. Um, and you can see, you know, right now I'm. It's not very clear, but I am selected on Dave's review. So Dave is only one individual, so that's why we've got one. If we go to kind of this regular view, these are just people out there doing their own reviews for these uh, restaurants in general. And if we deselect it, now we get everybody, uh, Dave mm. and the community, and you know, it's ordered by. Uh, default, 
uh, by Dave's review, his highest to, okay. to lowest. And the nice thing about, uh, at least in this dashboard, you, you can actually filter on these things and sort them, which is kind of nice. The, I, I think going back to Chris, what Chris says at the beginning is super important, Chris. I think what it needs on the first page is how to read instructions. Yeah. And then, and then yeah. that will answer what Chris was asking, like, how what should I do with this? Because then Chris yeah. will say, oh, cool, I'm going to go to this tab because Chris wants to know about his where he lives in Florida. What are those yeah. reviews? Right? Like, maybe that's that's why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's Yeah, cool. like walking through that helps. But, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's, you know, that's a struggle I, I deal with, too. I'm sure you guys do as well. Like, how, mm -hmm. how do you intuitively guide a user who didn't create the dashboard along that type of path? So they, mm -hmm. it just feels like, oh, I want to find out about this. And they just naturally go. That's a, that's a real uh, skill, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And so it is good, Michael, to see kind of this walkthrough, knowing that there's more behind it. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's still not structured in a way. It's almost like, again, that the intent is, hey, use this dashboard or use this to find the place that you should go. It almost needs to say like, you know, start like a map view. Like, well, where, where are you right now? And then, exactly. and then kind of go from there. So Correct. I like that. But, but even to that, I mean, when you look at the map, it's just, you know, circles everywhere it, it doesn't yeah. necessarily <laughs> point out you know highlights you know hey stay away from this area because mm -hmm. these are you know bad reviews the end yeah. so you, you kind of miss that if i'm in up, upper state new york mm -hmm. you know where do i go it's like well i, I can go yeah. anywhere it doesn't mean i'm going to get good pizza <laughs> <laughs> well you know that's a really good point too because like he there's two things i think happening here one he's he has a branding branding color of red and yellow so he's using mm -hmm. that in the content of the data which i think is a mistake mm -hmm. most of the time you should be using it based on is this good or is this bad because mm -hmm. it looks like yeah it looks like new york has horrible pizza and i never want to go there because it's all red exactly. but the, the second thing is um it's he's he's basing the visual on the number of reviews and that also to me as a pizza eater isn't as important as what's the best reviews like what you're saying michael if there's some place that has like a perfect 10 rating that's what I want to see pop. I don't necessarily care that all of these pizzas or all these places have been reviewed between like 50 to, to 500 reviews. That doesn't matter as much. First, I want to see what's best. And then the second thing I want to see is, well, how many people said it was best? But first, I want to see that that rating. I want that to pop. So there should, yeah, to your point, there should be like a couple big green spots here. Like, oh, that's the pizza I need to go to. I'm going to find out more. Correct. You you know one of the things I you know to add on to that that I I appreciate too is hey this is great I can see the total number of re reviews but I would like some interactivity or more information about the frequency of those reviews if this was last yeah. reviewed you know like six months ago or a year ago and hasn't had anything since you know I, I might avoid that place or look to see hey if it closed down but you know. I, I guess we only can work with the data that we have. And uh, I know there's a lot of really great information, data sitting behind the scenes. So if, if I was to kind of redo this, I'd actually surface that data up and provide some more insights. Uh, this to me just doesn't feel like it's enough. Okay. What, what, what else do you got in the, what, what other page do you got here that you can show? Uh, let me see. So the other one was um, very similar to the user reviews. Um, and the one poor guy in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> um, sorry. And I think that, you know, very similar to the uh, Dave's reviews and kind of the whole community thing. It's very similar, um, you know, but in here you can actually see what their comments were and um you know almost like a yelp review you know actually click on a place and um you know figure out hey is, is this really any good or not okay do, do you like this this one joe what do, what do you think about this one in particular this one if what i'm wanting to know is like um who the people are and what their opinions are and what's the kind of thing that seems to um, ring their bell or, you know, um, uh, suit their fancy more than others. Um, this 
this will be perfect um, because you've got the, you know, you've got the map, you've got the showing the concentration. I mean, obviously, it's a little bit skewed since uh, um, 1700, you know, whatever, uh, 1700 people are in New York and one one guy's way down in Alabama and all the rest <laughs> of them in New York. Right. So. Um, so there's a little bit of skewing there. And the thing about the colors where, you know, the the intensity of the color has nothing to do with the either the intensity of the score or the intensity of, you know, how many times did they do a review? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I still um, I still have not figured out what the intensity of the color is supposed to be. I guess it looks like if it's if it's greater than nine, it's a darker shade of red, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, based I on the score. So. Is that, I mean, that's what it looks like looking looks at like uh, the heat map there. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, if they were to, it, I don't know that it would interest me, but if they were to graph, do a graph on the followers, uh, that if you click on that, the red, all the red balls go away and they're replaced by... Um, uh, yellow, whatever color that is, yellow balls that show, you know, the 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 intensity of uh, uh, the the following that these people have. Not that that I don't know that that would it, but it's just a piece of information that if you wanted to highlight, um, you know, you ought to be able to highlight it. Okay. Is there any other Michael that uh, he have? He, do you have here? And he, do I see you have like seven different? Um, position tree, what is that? Yeah, well, th those ones aren't working with mm. the uh, Power BI online. Um, although, mm. when in reading the mm -hmm. description, I think those would actually provide more statistical information mm. about uh, mm. understanding if the review itself was um, more accurate than what it should be. So, mm -hmm. it's removing maybe some reviews where people aren't either posting as much or Mm. maybe they're fake accounts or or whatever it might be so uh it, it sounds like that would have been interesting if that actually worked um mm -hmm. otherwise you know this is the last uh dashboard that's okay really accessible yeah it's funny that the community have the slide in red but then they have everything in red <laughs> and then the other one is in yellow the mm -hmm. i don't know the one on the right um yeah, Just yeah i think it was the whole branding control, thing right? it, Hmm? You know, uh, I'm sorry. I know it was mentioned earlier. I don't agree also with, you know, the branding choice. Just because your colors might be the red and yellow doesn't mean you have to use these colors, uh, you know, mm -hmm. throughout. It's kind of a, a, for me, it's also difficult to see, you know, kind of this yellow, beige, whatever, <laughs> in the font colors. So, yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, and I do like that here you're comparing something. You're comparing Dave versus the community. At least that's a good thing. It's just a matter of, you know, the first, the the date axis. That's something that it was in the other one. And in the chat, uh, Timothy is saying the date axis don't line up between top and bottom. This was on a previous slide. Mm -hmm. But users may compare two things without realizing. And this happens like here again. The, mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like the, the, the those axes are the same thing. We want to say... We can see They're the ones not. on the right are in month, and the ones on the left are in years. I think I'm not 100 percent sure. <clears throat> yeah, and you case? don't have a, a zero level access. So yeah. this seven, you know, you've got five. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I, I think that's the other thing. Um, any, anybody else have any other comment or Chris about this one in particular? Yeah, well, I noticed too, you can see that on Dave's score on the bottom left, where unfortunately, um, so he didn't do any re reviews in a couple of years. The line chart then, the score by month, uh, mm -hmm. still connects to across that gap. Yeah. So it looks like, oh, in 2020, he liked everything at about 7.5. And that's not the case at all. That's just missing data, no review. So unfortunately, like that should be just nothing. <laughs> that should be just, you know, a, a break in that line chart. So. That, that's something that they've run across as well. You know, and that's sometimes can, can be hard, tricky to, to overcome. You almost then need to not use a line chart if it's going to automatically connect across a gap like that. It's misleading. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. 
Definitely. It's a. Uh, yeah, we saw that here too on the main yeah. chart. Yeah. Which, the main chart. Okay. 2020 yeah. is missing. Yeah. And that's that's the idea. You know, that's the idea of what we, when you're like talking about charts or anything that you're creating with other people, then you will see those things that others are seeing. That that's the important thing about, you know, talking with others, share your, your, your charts or your visualization, because that interaction and that communication with other people will help you see how others are seeing your visualizations. And that's how you can make them better and better. Like we're here. That's the, that's yeah. the idea, the main idea. So you have any other, Michael? Oh, that's that's the last one. You got it? That was okay. one. Let me, let me uh, so Joe, I have the one, one from you. Let me see if I can yep, the share that. Pie within a pie within a pie. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is this, we're talking about the pizza pie. <laughs> Is that one of them, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. To make it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks pretty cool, wow. but just because it looks cool doesn't mean that it's useful. You know, it's, it's three mm -hmm. nested pie charts, right? Forming mm -hmm. consistent, con, uh, not consistent, it isn't consistent, <laughs> concentric rings. Mm -hmm. You know, the you're supposed to be able to make comparisons of, how reading habits have changed from 1960 to 2008. Wow. So, uh, you know, you see the first two show uh -huh. a 20, uh, you got a 20 year gap, right? Uh -huh. 1960 to 1980. But from 1980 to 2008, you got a 28 year gap. What happened in 2000? I don't know. Maybe 2008 was the most recent information that they've got. You know, uh, um, it's reasonable to assume that you could have located data for the um i don't know uh for the ensuing years maybe have an, another little bitty circle but uh but that's what they're that's what they're trying to show is uh is showing then at at each of these periods of time what is uh the the breakdown of um what your source is of where your uh where you're going to be um reading stuff and getting your entertainment i suppose but um the the information that uh that that you get you know do you read the information uh uh just from something that's printed from your computer from your phone from the tv or from what okay so i i think i mean this is a great example i mean i think what we should would do and i put it on the chat is i think the the, the cool thing about this example is how can we make it better? I think we all need to yep. start thinking, how can we make it better? I, I said here, point. what do you like about this dashboard? I'll be perfectly honest. What I like is the data. That's it. The <laughs> visualization, no. But I like the data. The data seems super interesting. Uh, super mm. interesting what you what you brought in. Uh, but now we, we have to make it better. We have to figure out between all yes. of us, how can we... What do you think, uh, uh, Chris? The first thing that came to your mind when yeah. you... You, when, when I open it and you were like, wow, never seen this. What yeah. do you think? Well, that, I mean, that's a, that's a great point. I actually hadn't mm -hmm. thought about that, you know, but that's, that's a great way to look at it. Like if you, if you um, can separate the data from the visual, that's mm -hmm. totally right. Cause yeah, this, this one first reaction for me was um, Joe, like you were saying, this is a, uh, um, maybe a monstrosity is too much for that to work, uh -huh. that word, but, but a yep. donut hole within a, yeah, within a pie chart, within a bull buy, within a, it's, and, and then it's, then it's compounded by the confusing headline, like evolution of reading. I don't think of TV as reading. Mm -hmm. It's just like, where are you getting your content? So I, I think that is right. a great thing. I, I would, I would suggest, um, getting the data underneath the underlying data and redoing it from the ground up. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because it does seem like the story here is we used, to, I think it is, we used to read more in print. Now we're getting a lot from computers. It, it's like if that's the headline, which is kind of an obvious headline, but maybe it's quantified in an interesting way, mm -hmm. then I would start with that. And I don't know if that's a bar chart is the best way to do it um, or if there, there's more reading happening. So both the bar and the, the mix within the bar is, would be changing. Um, but that's what I would do first. I would just, and I, you know, probably all done this. I, I've done that as well. I've like, okay, I kind of see what this visual is trying to do. Ideally, you know, you can, if it's an Excel, go to like a, a hidden tab that has the actual data 
or copy it, download it out of a, a Tableau dashboard, and then try to try to build it again in a clearer way. So yeah, that's that's what I would do. Hmm. What do you think, Mike? When you saw first this the first time, boom, in your head, wow. I think anytime you use like a radial chart or something like this, um, you know, it it's intended to be, you know, just kind of like make you look at the big picture. It's like, oh, that's interesting. But then when you start asking questions and you want to do comparison, then this kind of chart seems to fall apart. Yes. Uh, you know, something, you, you know, Chris mentioned, hey, the bigger story really seems the decline in print reading compared to mm -hmm. other medium, maybe. Um, and if that's the case, you know, what's happening right now is my eyes are shifting left to right to find out what these colors are. The numbers, again, it just seems very focused on print. It, to me, it would be a better title, you know, the decline of print compared to whatever. But unravel this, just make it bar charts, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the years. And then you could see the decline in print, but you're going to see, you know, an increase you know, of all other things, whether it's electronics, uh, computer, um, mm -hmm. you know, TV in some cases. But uh, I, I think the bar chart in this scenario would be kind of the best way because the labeling could be built right in. You don't have to shift your focus and try right. to figure out comparison. Yeah. So we have here, it says in from the chat, even if you want to keep the layout, at least visually call out something important highlight color computers for example computers jump on the scene in 2008 to replace other media types so try to yeah I try to put, put put some story out there um it's not clear also somebody says timothy here does print includes kindles ah. tablets that's a very good question yeah um right. or do they lump it in with computers yeah the other thing is says reading for me, but when I want to look at it for me was, is a TV reading? Is a recorded music reading that I'm reading? That, that's listening music, I don't know. That was, uh, that, that confuses me a little bit. Um, but um, definitely, I mean, you have to redo the whole thing, right? From scratch, but it's really good. Uh, I like the data per se, right? The data, it's really interesting. So what, what do you select this, Joe? Uh, what, 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 what well, do you want? I, I selected it because it tells an interesting story and it's mm -hmm. an interesting way of looking at the wrong way to mm -hmm. tell an interesting story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. where it's trying to make it look like you're talking about one thing, reading, as you correctly pointed out, when mm -hmm. in reality we're looking at, again, it's a different question, you know, the decline of print media the mm. emergence of computer, the, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the, uh, the way society has changed since 1960, you know, um, but, but yeah, I mean, how, how the contribution of radio has changed. Well, you don't know how the contribution of radio has changed because if you notice the only two things that are labeled are mm -hmm. print and computer. They don't label anything else. So you're 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 set to guess, you know, what do they mean? Had they put data labels in there and put the the you know the the legend labels within the slices themselves, then that this possibly uh you could possibly keep the same visual, though I agree it's better as a bar chart than a, you know. And then there's no entry at all for computer prior to 2008. You know, someone mentioned one of the common comments that came in from the chat, uh, the emergence mm -hmm. of computers in 2008, or how, you know, did they all of a sudden, you know, uh, <laughs> there were no computers before 2008, you know, well, yeah, what about the PC Junior and the uh, TRS-80 uh, and uh, the Commodore 64, right? They came out before 2008, way before 2000, and they were around in 1980. Right. <laughs> so or, or maybe the percentage of the information was so little that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the dark green would have been, I don't know, the width of a human hair and would not have have mattered. Um, but the, the the other thing is, uh, again, to to the point about making it a bar instead of a circle uh, instead of a donut pie donut 
concentric, whatever the heck you want to call this thing, mm -hmm. uh, is that, you know, we, we as people, you know, think about it, we are better at judging area than we are mm -hmm. at judging angles. So we're fooled into believing that the segments represent similar populations or similar proportions when in reality they don't. And that's the biggest flaw of a pie chart, especially when you are trying to compare uh, multiple time periods with multiple progressions from multiple vectors in multiple dimensions. I don't mm -hmm. even know that I could say that twice in the same way. <laughs> Maybe you can say it again. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're recording it, so just re yeah. So yeah, I mean, I agree. It's it's horrible, but it's it's cool. That's just it. the the two things that it's got going for. It is kind of cool looking. One and two, the what was already pointed out, Chris and 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 Michael and you, Yamil, that um, the data behind it is there is an interesting story to be told here Correct. if we could get to the underlying story the underlying data and tell the story in a different perhaps more visually more compelling cool. and accurate way correct correct so in, in the chat they they recommend uh, timothy say area chart will yeah. have been a good another choice that's correct i agree i agree yeah i would um, even I, say worst case like if, if, if like the meeting was coming up in two minutes and somebody gave you this, like I gotta go present this. If you could split it up into three three pie charts, label a top 19, 60, 19, 80, 2008, and, and then just have a couple labels, done. You know, uh, that might be a, a, a rare case where a True. pie chart, if it's just a couple labels, might be okay and gets you through the meeting. Yep, correct, correct. And I know that you have one more, this one, that it's um, yeah. very the worst the worst pie chart in the history of man <laughs> it is a pie chart after the pizza delivery boy or girl i don't want to be sexist the pizza delivery person <laughs> has dropped it picked it up and shoved it under the door and the toppings all got shoved into one i don't know what the blue is a uh, uh, blue pineapple or something so it looks like a yeah. frisbee or something like you're yeah. doing like this yeah. or something i mean it's um mm. so what is this exactly what every few months of what what is this do you remember uh it's talking about the frequency with uh at which uh these i i thought at the time it had to, something to do with movie but uh there was no uh there was no caption with it uh it was just <laughs> on a site that showed how not to do pie charts you know the <laughs> worst mm. charts in the history of mankind um, but there was a, this one, unfortunately, didn't have any narrative because it kind of speaks for itself as to its badness um, yeah. as far as, you know, what it's what in the cat hair it's it's trying to do. Um, uh, yeah. And the numbers. Right. You're adding up the numbers in 42. At well, least they, they, it do, they, they do. Add up. Yeah, yeah. I was going to tell you that I, I, I did. The, I did the same thing you did. Yes. At least the numbers do add up to 100. Number. And yeah. um, you'll notice the 42%. If you're uh -huh. if you're looking at the shaded lines, the 42 mm. kind of looks like it's that much bigger than the 29, maybe. Um, mm. But the two oh. percent is it a slice or is it the color area or is it the shading? And what about where the dark blue uh, intersects with the light yeah. blue? You know, what, <laughs> that's, what's that's what I was that going to say here. Here, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. and then you see the little bitty light blue sh every few day, 8% and 2%. So that, you know, that looks like it's maybe four times bigger than the 2%. So yeah, those are proportional kind of, but yet, I don't know, you, you could have done it in a different way. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's talking about how often do people buy Frisbees? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, yeah. so this is, a, <clears throat> this is a, another blooper. I will say yes. This yeah. is a definitely a yeah. blooper. Yeah. yeah. So what do, you, what do you think, Michael? This one um, blows your mind. <laughs> no, I, I I would just skip this entirely and, and not give it <laughs> yeah. any thought. This is like <laughs> <Me too. laughs> it's one thing to be, be okay, even if it was like a pie, but it, it's not even a. No. It's like a bent, uh, <laughs> you know, with all the shadowing and things. It's like is it's, it's yeah. just overkill and i i yes. can't even you know s start looking at this data so for me i would have just said no and started playing yeah. on my phone 
<laughs> Hard pass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This this comes uh, in a way when I, when I look at it the first time, uh, Joe and and I think Chris, what do you think about this? Uh, when people are trained to do this charts that are like three D, three D charts. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. That's what reminds me. It is, uh, but even worse, it's like three and a half D or something. <laughs> it's like I don't know if there's like a four D, like a temporal rip in the time continuum that made this. Yeah. It's a, you you got to wear the special yeah. glasses because then it starts <laughs> popping out. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You but get my, my, I, looking at it. Yeah, I was with you. Like this isn't even worth like. It's it was total totally misconceived and better to move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the comment. That's hilarious. Uh, so this reminds me <laughs> when I left my frisbee in the car down here in South Mississippi during the summer. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what it is. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's 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 great, uh, Joe. I mean, that's a very good example of what people again should not do. Yes, and that's the idea. Please don't 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 Ooh. do that. You're not helping anyone. You're not helping your. Yeah your users or your executives or whoever you're, you're you're not helping anyone you're getting there more confused no 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 insights don't don't do that um well pretty much we're, we're almost we're at the end we, we did it again uh this is uh <laughs> thank you so much everyone i wanted to show um let me see if i have it right here guys uh something really quick we, we wanted to say um, so we wanted, I wanted to say, you know, data meaning, uh, or a sponsor here with company that we work for that is, you know, you know, uh, sponsor this show. Uh, we actually yesterday give a receive, uh, an award for becoming, uh, the Altrix to 20, 2021 America's wow. partner of the year award. Wow. Uh, wow. So Congratulations. Yeah. Data meaning, uh, we, uh, became, uh, the 2021 Altrix. Like I said, America's Partner of the Year Award. These are some of the guys here that work at Dana Meaning, uh, Marvin and Josh and Katie and some other guys here. Uh, it was a big effort. Um, thank you, everyone, you know, that, that support us through this show, through many other things that we do during the week and, and, and all our clients. And uh, thank you so much. And of course, I always, always thank you. I mean, I, I call, you know, Joe and, and, and Chris kind of like the Avengers. Like, you guys are my, uh, <laughs> like, you're coming back. You're like the, the first Avengers of you this You are too show. kind. Um, yeah, I yeah. think that it, it, I was told that um, that uh, we're in the 30th, I think 30, 31st show. Uh, I, I don't know. Tell me if that's right or wrong. Uh, so, um, but, and you know, we, we hope to do a 50s show. You know, when we go to a 50, we're going to invite you all. And we're gonna do a big celebration and and dr joe being you you know big fan of yours and all your stuff and then of course and, and chris please follow them on you in linkedin they have great content i mean i love when i mean every time that chris is putting like do a business don't business yeah <laughs> super interesting stuff and dr joe you know he, he's, he's doing all this you know speaking everywhere in the world i mean follow him please and you you have also that show mind to mind right Tell us about yes, the sir. show. That's very important uh, so people can follow you. Sure. The second Thursday of every month, I co-host a um, talk show called Mind to Mind with Tiffany Nielsen. Uh, mm -hmm. Second Thursday at 4 p.m. It's simulcast on LinkedIn Live, YouTube Live, Vimeo, and IoT Marketing. We uh, just talk about the things that are on our, well, mind. <laughs> sometimes it's technical. Sometimes it's not. Tomorrow's show, since it's the month of the month of Valentine's Day, we are talking about the power of love. <laughs> awesome, nice, awesome, and I'm like, you know, super happy to please follow all these great, great content creators. I mean, great friends of us, uh, and thank you so much for being here. And of course, I'll, I'll hope to see you again. Uh, we have again uh, every single week we're doing this at 3 p.m. We have different topics. Next week is pets, so we have such a dog lover cat lovers i mean probably they're gonna fight here the next week but uh you know what we have a uh, a lot of uh pet lovers are gonna join on next week and we're gonna have data visualization related to dogs cats and things like that so so much fun thank you so right. much <laughs> yeah thank you Thanks, all. thank you have a wonderful right. week wonderful you week too. bye everybody, everybody. You thank too. you bye